Hey everyone, Rarity Dash here, and it's time for another reaction request. If you have a video that you'd like me to react to, check the description below. There's a link that'll take you to a Google document full of all of the relevant information. So today we're going to be looking at uh, this video titled, My Little Pony Lore is Princess Celestia Evil and Why Twilight Destroyed Most of Equestria by Arch. So yeah, 30 minute My Little Pony Lore video. Um been a while since I've reacted to anything like this. I suppose I probably, and back in the day when I was doing pony content for the, uh, the majority of my uploads, did uh, something vaguely similar to this, but I can't really remember. Um, honestly, I'm a little bit surprised that stuff like this still gets made this many years after the show ended, because uh, this is just from a month ago. Uh, it was like... Is there really that much to speculate about anymore? Is Princess Celestia evil? Like, I would say the answer to that question is pretty firmly no. Uh, you would have to really twist a lot of things to make that case, I kind of feel. Um, is she occasionally neg negligent? Is she occasionally useless? I think you could make uh, <laughs> those cases a little bit easier. But evil? I, I, I don't think that really... Um, I don't know. I don't even know what we're referring to with the second part of that. Why Twilight destroyed most of Equestria. I don't remember her doing that. So, like, or anything that could be called that. Like, even interpreted as her destroying most of Equestria. So, um... Because, I mean, she did make a few mistakes along the way, but I don't really remember anything going quite that wrong. And if it did, I, I think they probably fixed it. <laughs> So, um, yeah, I don't know. I don't really know what we're getting into here, but I'm interested to find out, I suppose. Let's go ahead and get it started. Here we go. Greetings uh, and salutations, friends. It is time once again for the annual I did far too much research for this My Little Pony lore video. Theory Classic okay. Edition. As today, we are going to ask the seemingly at first blush absurd question... Is Princess Celestia? It evil? does seem okay. Princess I'm intrigued Celestia if you know it's absurd. Being the kind and beneficent ruler of Equestria, the alicorn that makes the sun rise in the morning and who spends all her time seeing to the good governance of all pony kind, and by extension, a fair few of the pointless and obtuse rituals and traditions that cling to any long-lived and successful system. Like parading geese through the streets of the capital. Uh, which doesn't exactly sound like the precise blueprint for an equine equivalent of Hitler or Stalin. And from yeah. what we can see in the main show, Celestia seems to be doing her best to run the nation. And even when interacting with her people and friends, she appears to be kind hearted and caring. If a little oblivious, especially around her sister, whom she prepares pancakes for every morning, and she even participates in a silly little play put on by her friends. Again, not the spitting image of a bloodthirsty dictator, though she does have a little habit of repeatedly encroaching upon the borders of nearby less civilized nations, which Let's all be fair here is essentially a virtue, really. So why are we even talking about this? To reason, yeah, I don't know. The most immediately obvious is the fact that in the next generation of the oh. show, Equestria has gone to shit well. and hell and more. And I'm not merely talking about the precipitous decline in quality of the entertainment in and of itself. Okay. But instead, I'll take your word for it. A unified and harmonious continent of many species has become disjointed in the extreme. In the new generation, I did read a synopsis, and this is part of why I didn't want to watch it. Separated tribes, earth like, ponies, unicorns, and pegasi, all going off to form their own. Really gonna undo? There were even wars waged between them. And pony racism was so prevalent, it became the fundament upon which these separate societies were built. 
And as for the diverse species of old Equestria, well, a lot of them simply don't exist anymore. Griffins, and not around. Yucks. Okay. Zebras, extinct. Kirin, killed. And that's before we get to all of the animals. Old Equestria had all sorts of creatures. Bears, pigs, cows, etc. And a disturbing number of them too are, well, just gone as are most signs of proper civilization. Equestria once had sizable cities like Manhattan and elegant castles, but besides the Pegasi, who have retained and even approved upon some of their technologies, everything else has been wiped from the face of the Earth. Whatever went wrong in between the original series and the new, it was absolutely catastrophic. With entire this is why maybe you don't set it in the same timeline. Events and cities level to the point of not a brick remaining atop brick. The destruction was so complete, the only reason I don't conclude that the planet was glassed from orbit by Battlefleet Solar is that some life evidently survived. About 1 or 2 percent of the original life still life though but um why should the blame for all of this misfortune be laid upon Cilicia's shoulders yeah do horses have shoulders anyway you I... the idea. <laughs> well the reason for that potential seating arrangement of the blame is part two Celestia's apparent willful and repeated disregard or absolute criminal negligence of threats endangering Equestria. With the very first episode of the very first season providing a brilliant example of this. See, back in the good old day, a thousand years ago, Princess Celestia had a sister, Princess Luna. The two were co-rulers, with Celestia raising the sun and Luna the moon. This highly nomenclatural appropriate division of tasks was handed down to the two by their old mentor, Star Swirl the Bearded, who had previously been carrying out the action of raising the sun and moon by sacrificing unicorns. Their magic, I... at least. And yeah. the two ruled together, carrying out this vitally important task for quite some time, until they had a falling out that got quite violent. Probably over something incredibly petty, if later episodes are to be believed, like falling out over pancakes and flowers level petty. <laughs> and their conflict ended with Celestia banishing Luna. I hope it is something like that. that. Completely <laughs> mad and monstrous, and it was like the breaking point. Nightmare Moon to the literal moon for one thousand years. And the show, Friendship is Magic, starts, you guessed it, 1,000 years to the day of said banishment. An itsy-bitsy little factoid that Celestia elects to not share with her star pupil, Twilight Sparkle, whom Celestia basically leaves the entire job of stopping Nightmare Moon to. Now, Twilight's age at the time is a bit diffuse, but she's probably no more than 17 years old at most, still undergoing her studies. And this Celestia right. places the fate of the world squarely on top of her, with no warning, no hints, and precious little preparation. At least during the Nightmare Moon thing, Celestia was standing by relatively close to help in case the worst happened. But in pretty much, <laughs> no, it's actually in every disaster thereafter, save one, Celestia was of precisely zero help, and would even be on many an occasion an active inconvenience and impediment. Like that one time, for example, when she told Twilight to stop overreacting, when Twilight was in the process of exposing Queen Chrysalis's plan oh, yeah. to over Equestria. By pretending to be a princess. And then Chrysalis just Instantly, beat her. <laughs> last year, I did cover aforementioned Chrysalis, so check that out if you're interested. 
And to further hammer the horseshoe home, we know from a bout of time travel topsy-turvy later on, with the second best pony of the show, Starlight Glimmer, that if everything was Starlight's left a out good to dick. Celestia by herself, then the world of Equestria would be irreversibly doomed seven ways till Sunday. So, um, is Celestia just really terrible at her job? Or <laughs> I mean, possibly. Causing all of this, because a um, 100% failure rate is pretty extreme, I suppose. I mean, there's a better well, case to be Celestia made that she's incompetent than she's evil, Celestia I think. We know Celestia managed to subdue Nightmare Moon in the past. And we know Celestia and Luna together defeated and entrapped Discord, the Chaos Dragon, in the past as well. Furthermore, we also know she ruled Equestria for over a thousand years, and she clearly did a far better job than if the ponies were left to their own devices, as seen in the next generation, and by the simple, unavoidable fact that most ponies are absolute, unrepentant retards. Oh God. <laughs> I would barely trust this bunch to breathe and walk at the same time, never mind running their own nationhood. If there ever was a species perfectly suited to monarchy, it is the ponies. <laughs> Thus, it seems unlikely, despite her occasional trollish tendencies, that Celestia is actively malicious. It also demonstrates that she is pretty damn good at her job as an administrator, and that she was planning ahead for the future by looking for a successor. And yeah. this is where we get to the interesting part, her successor and protege, Twilight Sparkle. Because Celestia's biggest failing was not being evil, or even necessarily incompetent, though she would continue to be remarkably and repeatedly obtuse to the point of endangering everyone in Equestria again and again and again by always failing to inform Twilight of the apocalyptic problems she heaves onto her non-stop. But rather, Celestia's biggest failing was in not teaching Twilight to do what she herself did find someone else to pick up the mantle when she feels her mind begin to slip. Because you see, Celestia was not evil, she was simply starting to go very, 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 very crazy. Hear me out here. Again and again, Celestia knows about impending threats. She knows about Tirek and his escape from Tartarus for months, if not even longer, before he becomes a threat. And yet, despite being in control of an entire nation with an elite military wing in the form of the Thunderbolts, no efforts at all are expended in finding this existential threat. Furthermore, when the danger of T Rex Thunderbolts, you mean Wonderbolts? To ignore, she sends the only they really military? recently they're... reformed Dragon of Chaos Discord to capture T Rex. And in a shocking turn of event, the Chaos Dragon betrays her. Me? Comes Having back around. But... managed to maneuver herself and everybody else into a corner. The Alicorn, Celestia, Luna, and Cadence all give their magic to Twilight, presuming that since Tirek doesn't know about Twilight, she might be able to hide it. Or if worse comes to worst, fight Tirek. This is merely the she does a, a long pretty good job of that. Do or die gambles centered solely on Twilight's little purple butt. As her OCD riddled form will be required to carry the fate of every living thing in the world over and over again. And this kind of constant self destructive behavior demonstrated by Celestia, plus obviously forgetting stuff constantly, like when she gets Twilight to fetch a book that Celestia literally wrote to teach Twilight stuff instead of Celestia simply telling her, it is presumably because Celestia simply does not know anymore. This is some weird behavior which leaves me with two possible explanations. A. Celestia somehow knows the future. 
not at all impossible in a setting where time fuckery and prophecies are hardly uncommon. And thus yeah. knows that Twilight must be put through hardship to become a competent replacement. Fair enough. Or B, Celestia is simply going stark bucking mad <laughs> in a very destructive way. Again, the number of earth-shattering threats she simply ignores and or never mentions is staggering. And she seems to deeply enjoy chaos as well. When Twilight and her friends ruin the grand galloping gala, Celestia is overjoyed and thanks them. She goes to extreme lengths to rehabilitate Discord, an incredibly dangerous creature, and again the dragon of chaos, and even trusts him to take care of Tirek. This, despite Celestia being the one to imprison both of them in the first place. Not to mention the whole Our Town thing, where Celestia allows a major anti-cutie-mark communist commune <laughs> to develop within her borders without well, I mean, so much as a raised hoof in protest. It was fairly small Not scale, this so... this is an alicorn thing or something either. Luna repeatedly gives direct... And she may have not even just known about it. ...in their dreams. It's her entire job. Which I guess is still a problem, the lessons but... they need to learn and walking them through how to fix their fuck-ups. And when Luna discovers a major threat to Equestria, the nightmare demon she created to torment herself for being a bad girl a thousand years ago... <laughs> okay, yeah, um... Luna's got issues too. Yeah. Anywho, when the demon is about to break out of Luna's mental prison of self-anguish, what does Luna do? She works together with Twilight and the others to fix it. Furthermore, Twilight and Cadence are also both alicorns and relatively rational. Okay, maybe Twilight less so, but Cadence seems to have all of her ducks in a row, or horses in this case. So, mm -hmm. what is the difference between them? Age. Princess Cadence is a very new unicorn, at most maybe ten years older than Twilight, perhaps. And Probably Luna not even, I would Celestia's say. Celestia's little sister. And if we take into consideration that during her banishment to the moon, she was essentially a different person, a pony, altogether, then Luna is a millennia younger than Celestia. And with great age comes great madness, evidently. As Discord 2, incredibly ancient as well, <laughs> is patently insane, preferring to well, live in a yeah. deranged chaos land to reality. And he as well decides to do to Twilight what Celestia did all those years, a trial by fire. But Discord being, well, the literal incarnation of absolute batshittery takes things another 17 steps further by uniting every big name enemy Twilight yeah. has ever fought against her. And hey, he might have risked the lives of every living being in the world by doing so, but it did make Twilight Pokevolve into a full-scale alicorn, so, you know, there, there is that. Can't argue with the results, I suppose. And you know what? You actually kind of can't. For there is absolutely an argument to be made in favor of this unfathomably dangerous teaching practice. Twilight Sparkle's entire story arc is that she is super duper clever, but lacks the experience to best make use of her knowledge and apply it in a worthwhile and sensible way. And experience that harshest and most unforgiving of school mistresses teaches by far the best when she is spanking you with a cheese grater. Even more so when the lessons being taught is one of teamwork, as Twilight herself is but one part of the six main heroes. Well, seven if you count the second best pony, and of course we do. And incidentally, best pony yeah, is of it's course Dirty. Worth counting, yeah. Starlight. And so, to return to the point of the Alicorn's horn, the best way to groom the finest possible successor to the throne is to bodily toss Twilight's horsey haunches into the fire again and again. Dunking her in the next crucible, the very self-same moment she crawls her way out of the first one. And hey, it worked. 
Twilight Sparkle and her friends defeated every single world obliterating threat thrown their way, while solving even the minute interpersonal relationship problems of ponies as a side business. In essence, by the time the show completes, the entire planet is under the absolute 100% cultural sway of Equestria and its friendship ideology. Dragons, griffins, yaks, even the love-eating changelings that literally live off devouring the positive emotions of others have bent the knee in some yeah, yeah, to the that's a good point. throne. But the question then remains, if Celestia did such a good job in grooming Twilight, then why by Luna's rump did the world end in between seasons? <sighs> Now, the simple and boring answer is that for all of its flaws, MLP, Friendship is Magic, was a pretty good show. Classic 2000s children's entertainment. Now, sure, it's naive in a way that only a cartoon for little girls could be, but the animations are solid, the art style is consistent, and evidently appealing considering the quantity of porn it spawned, <laughs> and the episodes themselves are classically structured. There is a problem. The characters need to overcome some struggle to resolve it, and at the end, everyone learns a valuable lesson. This obviously necessitates the creation of challenges, and for our heroes to vanquish those challenges. Simply put, at the end of Friendship is Magic, everything was perfect. Like the ending of a happy fairy tale. But endings don't earn franchise money, and... <laughs> Because Hasbro wanted more cash from the franchise, they needed new toys, new figures, and new playsets. A brand new trademarkable world. And so, the old one had to die in nuclear fire. But that is a boring explanation, and I like mine very much better. You see, Celestia did her job too damn well. As her protege, Twilight Sparkle, purged Equestria with the unyielding absoluteness of hydrochloric acid. Every villain, every opponent, every competing ideology, every single issue scourged from the world, and I do mean every. Twilight even exterminated the supernatural threats. In the next generation, there are no cockatrices, no wendigos, no manticores. And whilst before Celestia, in her foolish mercy, imprisoned various villainous creatures in Tartarus, well, it should come to no surprise that in the next generation, there is no Tartarus. Princess Twilight clearly having adopted a far more permanent solution to disharmony. Okay. Now this might seem a somewhat extreme turn of events for the once demure bookworm from the Cantalot Library, but au contraire. Twilight is a perfectionist. An OCD times 12 level perfectionist. With a habit of writing very long, very detailed lists. Yeah? And a pony whose friendship school, amongst other things, taught lessons in the theory of defensive friendship, where the tales of Twilight's countless crushing victories over the forces of non-conformity are recounted and taught. And once upon a time, Twilight's more absolutionist tendencies were kept in check by her friends who would calm her down when she was going a little too crazy and watering down her more strident measures. Like, oh, I don't know, the time she enchanted a doll to charm the entirety of Ponyville into fighting over it. Why? Because there <sighs> Just, weren't any friendship... You can always point at less than zero, and so, can't you? in Twilight's own words, if there aren't any friendship problems to be solved, I'll just make one. <laughs> now to mention her need to itemize and organize and reorganize and re-reorganize everything until it is just right and lockstep. But unfortunately for the world, whilst Alicorn rulers like Twilight are immortal, regular ponies are not. And so, slowly, 
but surely Twilight had to watch her friends grow old and frail and eventually die. Yeah. This was the one friendship problem that nature would not allow Twilight to solve. And even if well, she, she found would start a spike for a while. <laughs> difficult enough for a pony in her position, as even <laughs> as just the princess of friendship, she noticed that the other ponies were treating her differently. She was a symbol, now not a person. And symbols don't make friends. At least not easily. And even if she did find someone new, they too would eventually grow old and die and they would certainly not be able to treat her with the kind of irreverent care and camaraderie of her Also, is Cadence immortal? Now, there is the question what about Alec Horns, none of which appear yeah, okay, to the next generation, indicating that Alec Horns may age extremely slowly, but that they too are not immortal, whilst Alec Horn rulers may actually be immortal an ability imbued into them through some function beyond their species as one of the few antagonists in the next generation as well is an alicorn as old as celestia and luna and she opaline arcana where did she come from then declared queen with this in mind then it honestly seems entirely plausible that a princess twilight already twitchy at the best of times, would slowly grow more and more radically insane over millennia of loss and sorrow. Attempting more and more so to distract herself with work, she applied the full furious force of her OCD to fully harmonizing Equestria, implementing more and more complete solutions to every problematic issue and creature until there were none left. And then at some point after the purges, Opalina <laughs> presumably <laughs> arrived. As the next generation tells us that Twilight elected to seal away all magic in Equestria in an effort to keep it from Opaline. A pretty damn extreme measure, but yeah, that's... heard of one as it sort of happened in Friendship is Magic as well. Twice, in fact, I think. Still, this indicates that Twilight could not defeat Opaline, and without her friends by her side, she could not effectively wield the elements of friendship or love against her either. Incidentally, this also presents us with another alternative explanation for the sanitization of so much life in Equestria, as the battle between Twilight and Opaline could easily have been cataclysmic. During even the brief fight between T-Rex and Super Saiyan boosted Twilight, the two raised an area the size of a small town to the point of tearing the earth apart. A battle that only ended when T-Rex took a hostage and with all of Twilight's friends by the point of Opaline's arrival being long dead, well, let's just say that future Twilight would have had significant less reason to back off. And a grudge battle between two creatures that are all but gods would certainly have facilitated a drastic change in terrestrial topography. With Twilight presumably coming to the conclusion that her only options were to either take away Opaline's objective for waging war in the first place, magic, or continue to bathe the world in the fires of friendship-fueled annihilation. And hey... Both could be true at the same time. Twilight may have been interrupted in her crusade against the remaining non-conformist elements of Equestria and forced to fight a battle against a new foe she could not actually overpower. One incidentally that Celestia and Luna did know about. And yet, in the usual traditional fashion, chose to not inform Twilight about. <laughs> Details, eh? And since apparently her friendship school was disbanded at some point, too, presumably due to a lack of need for professional friendship problem solvers, Twilight had no allies upon which she could truly count to best this unexpected assailant. So was this another oversight by Celestia, 
that he simply forgot about this new enemy greater than any Twilight had ever faced? Or was it that she did not teach Twilight to raise a protege like she did? Or even more importantly, to clamp on the brakes around the time of the fifth round of mass cleansings? Or another sign of Twilight's encroaching madness, perhaps? As incidentally as well, Opaline would be older by far than both Twilight and Celestia, and she is a magic-devouring tyrannical monster. Or perhaps this is simply the nature of the world, the unbreakable wheel of time, for every Alicorn ruler to eventually be faced with a challenge greater than themselves. The realization that if one waits long enough, all friendship turns to dust and bones, and be forced in turn to rely on a new generation of heroes. Heroes that have yet to learn the ultimately cruel lesson that even magic is temporary. So no, at the end of it all, the answer to the question, is Celestia evil, is no. Celestia yeah. was old. Celestia was dead. <laughs> and Celestia was losing her grip. She had seen countless friends live and die, and live and die, and live and die. And she was growing tired of it. She wanted to live out her last few years with her sister relishing and valuing the friendship that she still had with her and learning the lessons that twilight had learned as well anew with luna and is it then so wrong for her to withhold that last fine sour lesson that ultimate immortality is in fact a poisoned cup that twilight too would have to suffer for millennia before she too learned that at the end of friendship lies only sacrifice? Would any pony have agreed to become the princess's protege if that was part of the curriculum? I'm not so sure. And after a thousand years of loyal administrative and bureaucratic service, I'm sure Celestia has deserved this little omission of fact. Besides, Twilight's a clever girl. I'm sure she'll realize eventually when she's doing more harm than good. <laughs> well, at least there were some survivors. Until next time, I've been Arch. Thank you very much for listening. I hope to see you all again soon. Have a good day. Okay, so yeah, that was that was interesting. I I don't know. Um, yeah, I uh, I mean, I obviously haven't seen any of the fifth gen stuff. Um, and I mean, a lot of the reason was that I read a synopsis. I mean, part of it was that uh, just the animation didn't look as good as, good to me. Like the three D animation, just not as it doesn't have the same charm as the. French of his magic style. But uh, yeah, part of it was that I did read a synopsis and just the sense that things had gone, that it was set in the same timeline, but things had just gone so far off track and that everything we had worked through with French of his magic was just being kind of discarded and uh, just a sense that Twilight had failed. Uh, that didn't really appeal to me. And, <laughs> I mean, um, watching something like this, it kind of just confirms that maybe I made the right choice there. I don't know. I, uh, um, like, it is kind of, it does sort of, like, like just from what I've seen, <laughs> these questions seem pretty ridiculous, but... Uh, knowing that that apparently is canon in terms of how the timeline goes and uh, that apparently all these all the other species are gone and uh, all the other magical creatures 
and all that stuff that made the world of Equestria so interesting. <laughs> and all the ponies hate each other, which means, yeah, of course, the Wendigo, Wendigos have to be gone because, I mean, that was the whole thing there, that if the ponies did start to hate each other, that would just be it. Just um, built, baked into the lore, and then they just get rid of it. And uh, I guess you have to really just fill in the blanks as to why, why it's so different. Um, and with everything having been left to Twilight. Um, and yeah, again, this whole thing with this other villain, this other Alicorn, like that is the kind of thing that does sort of just by having that introduced as something that we were never aware of, that apparently always existed, um, that kind of threat. Um, that does kind of <laughs> cast a bit of a shadow on Celestia, even if obviously that wasn't with the intent with how she was written while the show was actually active. Just the fact that this was out there, like it does kind of color. Like I see where this guy is coming from. I mean, he's just, like laying it on a little thick with how he's presenting it. Like it's a bit, uh, <laughs> a bit of a show, but, um, I mean, it's all fair with what they did, with how they, how they continued it. I feel like um, if you're going to draw threads connecting and continuing it from one thing to the other, then it does sort of recontextualize some of what came before. And you do have to, you, you can start to ask for these questions. And um, yeah, I don't know. I mean, this was interesting. <laughs> <laughs> like, I I feel like I would have more to say about it if I had seen the Gen 5 stuff. Um, seen, like, any of it. Instead of just having a vague idea of what the premise is. Um, so, yeah, I'm not sure I'm fully prepared to comment on everything here. Which is why maybe I didn't say enough during the video. But at the same time, this was interesting. And, um, yeah, I, I think, I mean... <laughs> I don't know. It was it was an interesting video. Um, I'll be curious to hear what you guys all have to say about it. Um, but yeah, there we go. Don't really have much else to say here. Hope you guys liked the reaction. Let me know if you did. And see you in the next one.